in the West, what we call the West today, there was once upon a time when people called themselves Christian Dom. Or Judo, I mean, they, they called themselves Greco-Roman. All these were ways of defining themselves before they began to call themselves Westerners. The idea of the West came when America began to become dominant. So you couldn't say, those people are on the East. <laughs> Europeans are in the East. So you have to expand the Western European idea to embrace the Americas. Or you're talking about Euro-American civilization, whereby you create a construct to link the American experience. But even if you say Euro-American experience, how about the Australians? How about the New Zealanders? They came out of Europe too. So, if, so, so the easiest time you can use to embrace them collectively is the West. So you come up with the West as an idea. So this way, the idea of the West, and you begin to see that even the idea of the West during the Cold War embraced the Japanese, who are racially not part of the European experience. You see what I'm saying? But because of the Cold War, you could lump Japan as part of the West. Even Korea, South Korea, was part of the West. Even though they had no military alignments, but they have American military bases there. Am I clear in what I'm trying to do here? Because I think we have to understand these distinctions. Then we can speak about these entities we are going to look at. Now, it is against this background that we can talk about Islam and the West in the sense that you're now talking about Islam as a religion and the manner in which it expands itself globally. And what we now call the West today is slightly different from what we call Islam or the Muslim world or Darul Islam. In the sense that in what we call the West today, there is a social contract which provides room for people who believe in the transcendent and people who don't believe in the transcendent. Because today, if you look at America, there are people who are atheists, but they are as American as anyone else. Isn't that true? You have Americans, because see, when Europeans call themselves people of Christendom, they excluded Jews or anybody else who was a dissident. You are not part of Christendom if you are Jewish. And you know the whole history of that development in Europe. So from the time I stopped, 1258, at that time, the Europeans saw themselves strictly as people of Christendom. But if you go back to 1258, at that time, Islam was gradually beginning to expand into Africa, and not most of those people are converted to Islam. Islam was beginning to move towards Malaysia and Indonesia. It will be only after the 1500s that people we now call Malaysians and Indonesians were beginning to be exposed to Islam. They were not Muslims. They were Buddhists or Hindus. But the last 500 years changed the wall of, uh, of identification to the point that over the last 500 years, sufficient number of people living in Southeast Asia would become Muslim to the point that now the largest population of Muslim is where? Not in Iran, where Islam came early. In Indonesia, right. They became Muslim overwhelmingly over the last 500 years. 